That solar panel right there is powering this entire room. This journey started a couple months back when I had some unused solar equipment lying around, so I figured I'd have some fun with it and try to put it to good use. Hi. I just had an idea of what to do with this thing. And I don't know if it's possible yet, I'll just say that, but I'm gonna try to use it to solar power this entire room. Lamp, AC unit, second lamp, and a fan that I never really use. And then my workstation, monitor, laptop, and then the keyboard and this standing desk goes up and down. What about the overhead light? What overhead light? <laughs> it's a skylight. So I knew all the devices I wanted to run off the power station, but I first had to figure out how much energy they used before figuring out the solar panels. The AC unit and the lamp are plugged directly into the power station, and then everything else runs off of this extension cord right here. It goes behind the bed, in the corner, and then it sits like right here underneath the dresser. You might be able to see it poking out right there. With everything running, it was using 173 watts. And then I cranked the AC unit up to full blast and it started using 560 watts. So I was well within the wattage limits of the power station, extension cord, and the power strips. Then I turned off the devices I didn't need at that moment and I just started to work from the room like normal for the next few days. The battery started the first day fully charged and ended at 75%. And after the second day, the battery was sitting at 42%. I've lost the ability to turn the lamp on and off with this switch, but I have gained so much more. The third day, the room didn't get much use since I worked mostly from downstairs. By the end of it, the battery was sitting at 32%. It's a 1,000 watt hour battery, so the room used on average around 230 watt hours per day. But you have to take into account weekends when I'm outside beating my friends at disc golf. Oh, shit. <laughs> so let's round it down to an even 200 watt hours per day. With my energy requirements figured out, it was finally time to tackle the solar panel. Where is the panel gonna go? What size panel do I need? and how am I gonna connect it to the power station, which is all the way up in that room? These are all good questions. This part of the yard gets a lot of sun early in the day, but it would be hard to get the wires all the way up to the room up here because it's so far away and there's this gate here. So I'm looking at this part of the yard, which has a lot of sun later in the day. Call me crazy, but I'm really liking the idea of mounting it vertically to the fence here. It's definitely not the spot that will generate the most power, but it'll be easy to mount, easy to connect to the power station, and frankly, pretty stealthy, which I like. I drilled a couple screws into the fence posts and hung the panel from those screws. Since this isn't the sunniest spot, I'm using the biggest solar panel I have, which is this 200 watt solar panel, but I'm not sure if it's gonna be enough. I think it turned out pretty good. It's stealthy and I hung it a little off the ground to avoid grass from shading the bottom of it. Now for the real challenge. How do I connect the solar panel to the power station? AKA, how do I go through that window? I have an idea. Uh, so I ordered a cable and we're gonna find out if it works. Nobody's gonna know. Nobody's gonna know. They're gonna know. So, uh, thank you, I guess, to whoever lived here previously and did a terrible job of installing and insulating the AC unit. The solar panel outside is connected to this cable. I had to use another adapter cable. We could test it with a multimeter to see, you know, if it has voltage or anything, but let's just go ahead and plug it in. Might take a second for 
the solar charging for the MPPT to work. Are you kidding? Oh, oh, okay. I'm seeing the charging in 30 watts, 39. So it's working. Well, that's the good news. And the bad news is that where I've mounted it will probably not collect a lot of power. I'm gonna let this charge though for the rest of the day and we'll just see how much energy it collects. As the shade on the panel slowly went away, the output crept up and peaked at 93 watts. Oh, and I had unplugged everything from the power station before doing this, except for the AC unit, which I wasn't gonna use that week anyways. The first day's results were bad. The battery went from 26 to 34%, and I left it out for a second day, and the battery got up to 40%. Which means the panel produced an average of 70 watt hours per day. We need three times that. So that spot is a no-go, and I'm really liking the look of this fence panel here. Unfortunately, this 200-watt panel is too big to fit there, but I have a smaller 170-watt panel. I went ahead and mounted the new panel to the fence and plugged it into the power station, and instantly I started seeing some really good output, even though the solar panel was still a bit shaded. As the day went on and the panel got in full sun, it started outputting close to 100 watts, the first day with the new solar panel, the battery went from 40% to 66%, and after a second day in the new position, it charged up to 88%. The second spot was looking promising, and at this point I was feeling a little antsy, so I decided to put it all to the test to try to run the room off solar power for a week. This small setup will definitely not pay for itself in energy savings, but that wasn't really the point. I was trying to have some fun, and see what's possible with today's tech. It does make sense in some situations though, like in a camper van or a workshop. And at the end of the work week, the battery was at 60% and over the weekend, it charged back up to 100%. So I'm counting this test as a success.